Hello and welcome back to the Stevenson Weekender sailboat build. In this episode we'll be working on the box that will hold the mast ultimately and also the sides of the hull. We will start with a couple of gussets that attach to the stem. The front edge of the sides of the hull will attach to these pieces. The plans call for cutting this piece out of a one and a half by one and three fourths inch piece of stock at a 37 degree angle. This required moving the fence right up to the blade, so here I'm installing a sacrificial fence. I'll then cut this piece in half, which will give us two identical pieces to use for each side of the boat. Now I'll get the saw squared back up with the dust collection reattached and start working on the box that will hold the mast. The front and back of this box are made out of half inch plywood and the sides are made out of three quarter inch stock. In order for the mast itself to be canted backwards uh, a little bit, the plans call for cutting the side pieces at an 87 degree angle. This next piece is what they're calling the mast collar. It's a small piece of uh, half inch plywood that helps hold the bottom of the mast box in place against the hull. Here I'm using a quarter inch round over bit just to give the edge a break to make it look a little nicer. Now I'll get the screws laid out to start to put together the mast box. Even the spacing these screws is of course completely unnecessary but I do like the end product to look a little deeper. I'm going to use tight bond 3 to adhere these pieces together. It is waterproof and I think it'll do fine and it's easier and quicker to use than the epoxy. Now I'll use that round over bit again to uh, make the edges look a little nicer. Okay, now I'm going to cut out the pieces for the side themselves. Each side is cut out of a single piece of 1 4 inch plywood. Now I'm back down at the boat shed and I'm trying to figure out a way to cut these bow gussets to length. As you will see in a second, this uh, bow gusset has to fit between the stringers of the upper deck and the lower deck and match that uh, angle on each. So I'm using this thin piece of paper to make a template that I'll then use to uh, cut the bow gusset to length with the proper angle on each end. I used this pull saw to cut the first end, but then I remembered I had a, a power miter saw, so I cut the second side with that. 
Here I'm using a straight edge to check the angles on the two stringers of the upper and lower deck and then using that power planer to try to get them to match a little closer as it comes around these curves so that the side pieces will lay against both stringers as flat as possible. Now my nephew is helping me uh, get this piece of side hole dry fitted. This will allow me to mark the back sides so that I'll be able to locate the screws. And we also spend some time here getting that uh, joiner piece put in place between the two halves of the uh, side hole. The plans say to adjust these side pieces as much as possible to get as much of the side sticking up above the top deck as possible while still covering all of the lower stringer piece. This requires some trimming of that forward edge of that back hole piece. So we marked it and then took the piece off and made the cut and then reattached it. Now we'll do the same thing with the other side. No one was around to help me hold this back piece except the cat, so I arranged a, a loose ratchet strap there to hold up one end while I got the other one attached with a screw temporarily. Just like on the other side, once I get the top and bottom of the board lined up with the upper and lower deck, I then use that compass to help scribe a line so I can make the cut to close that gap. didn't show it, but while everything was dry fitted in place, I used a pencil to mark the back sides of the pieces of the side hole, and then I'll use those lines to mark out where I need the screws that will be used to attach the side pieces to the stringers of the upper and lower decks. I then put a sealing coat of epoxy on all of the areas that are going to be joining together. Now I'm going to make the stringer that will attach the top of the lazarette front to the top deck. This piece requires a curve both in the up and down direction and in the forward aft direction. So on this leftover piece of 4x4 I first used the lazarette front itself to mark the curve in the up and down direction and then brought it back to the top deck and used it to mark the curve in the forward and aft direction. And then back at the bandsaw and this front edge of the stringer had to be cut at an angle so I get the table set and then we make that cut. I didn't have my compass with me so I used that adjustable wrench as a rough um, guide to make an approximately one inch uh, wide mark along that previous cut. With the bandsaw table returned to the 90 degree position, I made this next cut. And then I used this blue painter's tape to reattach those off cuts so that I would have a flat surface to run along the t bandsaw table to make the final cut in the stringer. Get the tape removed and you can see the final product. Okay, now I'll get that piece dry fitted to the lazarette front so I can get some pilot holes uh, drilled and we'll trim the edges 
of the piece to match the sides of the lazarette front. Now I'll use that power hand plane again to smooth out some of the rough spots in that stringer that resulted from my poor bandsaw skills. We'll put a sealer coat of unthickened epoxy along this edge and the top edge to get ready to attach it to the hole. We'll do the same thing here with the mast box and also with the forward bulkhead where the mast box is going to attach. After that unthickened epoxy had tacked up a little bit, I move on to the thickened epoxy and we'll get things put together. Even with my fancy compound curve top stringer on that lazarette front, I still had to use some ratchet straps to pull things into place while I screwed them together. The mast box went in a little easier against the forward bulkhead. I then got that collar glued and screwed in place. Now we'll get started in attaching the side pieces and I'll start with uh, getting those gussets glued and screwed in place and then we'll get a couple of stringers put on the transom. I didn't show it but there's also small stringers that get attached to the sides of the forward bulkhead and the sides of the cabin bulkhead. These are the joiner pieces between the forward and aft halves of the side hole. I mixed up a good amount of thickened epoxy and put it in the Ziploc bag and then cut the tip of that off so I can use it to easily apply uh, that thickened epoxy along the edges of the boards. First here you can see that bow gusset going into place and then we'll attach the uh, forward half of the side hole. There was a whole lot of screws to put in but because everything was pre-drilled and in place um, it was fairly easy. And then the next day I came back and did the other side. That's my mom helping me there.
again, lots of screws, but once we got all of it done, I think it ended up turning out pretty well. Here's some shots of the finished side pieces. As always, I appreciate you watching the video. The next step in the plan calls for attaching the rub rails along that upper edge of the side holes, but I think I'm going to deviate from that and go ahead and flip the boat over and glass the bottom and sides. This thing's gotten pretty heavy already, so flipping it ought to be interesting. So I hope you'll join me next time as we continue the Stevenson Weekender build. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.